I'm going to talk about how to build a Claude Shannon juggling machine. Uh, these are just some lessons learned, learned that I've learned over the last year. I've worked on this project for over a year and uh, only recently got it working. And so uh, I'd like to share these in case somebody else wants is, is inclined to build a machine too. <clears throat> uh, there's a lot of variables uh, that affect the performance of the machine and uh, most of them are uh, the length of the the length from one cup to the the other cup and uh, the geometry of the of the levers and so I'll talk about the the cups first uh, in my case there I came up with 54 centimeters apart if the if the distance is uh, too great then when the cup throws the ball um, it's going to come up short and it won't bounce and won't be able to hit this cup uh, conversely if the the distance is between the two cups is too close then it's going to th throw the ball uh, past the center here and uh, it's going to miss the cup as well and so uh, it's critical to get the right distance um, of, of the cups from each other. Um, two more critical adjustments are these two levers, uh, these two arms, uh, this one and this arm here, uh, very critical on where you make your adjustments. Um, this arm is composed of uh, two turnbuckles and uh, a threaded rod and uh, this one you really need to be able to adjust it simply because you're going to be changing this a lot uh, for one thing using changing this this uh, lever this arm uh, changes the the throwing force difference between the the, the two uh, the two cups if I if this cup here I want to make it come up higher and throw with more force then if I lengthen this rod uh, this one will come up if I shorten this rod then this one this side will come up so um, they're the they are opposed to each other the adjustments are opposed to each other based on your adjustment for this rod. So using changing adjusting this rod equalizes you can equalize the throwing uh, force of the two of the two cups. Um, this short rod, if you move uh, the connecting hole bolt hole out outwards, then both both cups will come up higher. Both will throw with more force. And if you move it in then they won't come up as high. Also, uh, where you connect this this uh, arm to this arm uh, affects both cups equally. This adjustment, uh, if you move this in, uh, both cups will throw uh, with more force. And if you move it out, they'll throw they'll come up lower not as high and they'll throw with less force. Uh, other factors that affect the performance of the machine uh, are the distance from here to the the bouncing surface um, and right now my my frame is just resting on some textbooks um, and it really needs to be hard mounted but uh, that affects how long the ball is spins in or spins in the time in the air. So that that's a critical factor as well. You need to raise or lower the whole frame uh, to affect the the dwell time of the ball in the air. Um, another factor is the size of the ball. This is a fifteen. 
uh, 15 millimeter ball. It needs to be heavy enough that uh, um, it can be thrown and not affected by any perfections on the bouncing surface. And by the way, I'm using a bouncing surface here. I'm using uh, the floor, which is uh, a ceramic tile. And some of the machines uh, that I've seen, uh, the two other machines that I've seen uh, that were built based on Claude Shannon's machine, they use a snare drum. And I tried the snare drum, and this surface here bounces much better than the snare drum did. And besides the snare drum, I live in an apartment block, so uh, it's really more neighbor friendly not to use the snare drum. Um, I use for a power supply, I'm using this cheap uh, 12 volt, 3 amp power supply variable. Uh, and the motor that I'm using is a, a 550 size, a 12 volt runs at 180 RPM at 12 volts and I measured with my multimeter I measured that this machine is running optimally at 6.5 volts uh, I probably need a better power supply though because uh, this one varies by almost a volt so you can you can hear the motor surging and running at different RPM uh, throughout its uh, the time that I'm running it on the video so it would be much more consistent and probably uh, work a lot better if it ran exactly the same RPM so uh, one of the things that I want to try is, is uh, a switching power supply uh, might be more provide more consistent voltage um, let's see I used uh, to build this, the materials I used was uh, a bicycle axle uh, housed with these two bearing housings. They, the, the bicycle bearings fit in these housings just perfectly. Um, this, the rod, the throwing rod is just uh, some fishing pole section uh, where these two ends the two end pieces they fit inside this major main rod and so I'm able to slide them out in and out and then I hot glue them uh, in place uh, the cups are just made out of of uh, some foam and some cardboard and uh, little vinyl sections there to give it a little harder set surface easier more consistent grip on the ball than just cardboard um, and I use a bamboo cutting board to build the frame as far as the number of possible variables uh, um, if you if I multiply all the different adjustment the number of adjustments for each arm all together uh, it comes out to about 60,000 uh, possible adjustments in this machine and uh, that's just some pretty large uh, adjustments here they could be made much smaller and I think the numbers would jump up into the millions of possibilities now of that 60,000 possible uh, adjustments um, I don't know how many would work uh, maybe there's several hundred um, but it did take a long time it took me uh, a year to get to this point uh, where I finally had a machine that was consistent enough in its operation uh, and then I found the the correct adjustments to make it work um, I just like to say that uh, somebody with access to a machine shop uh, could machine uh, build uh, could build a, a machine like this that I'm sure would be much more consistent in uh, in throwing the balls it has to throw the ball and catch them uh, the same way every time with and a throw with equal amount of force every time uh, frankly, I'm surprised this machine even works uh, in its current state because 
I've got this much slack in the arm right here. Although when it's spinning in one direction, I don't think this, this particular uh, play matters that much. Not that critical. But the frame itself should be hard mounted to the floor. This one here, you can see it's easily, uh, it moves up and down. And when it's in operation, you can see that it's moving a little bit. I'm sure that affects the performance. Uh, and the other factor, of course, was the, the surging of the motor. It's not running in exactly the same RPM all the time. So if you had a better motor, a stronger motor, uh, geared motor, I, I think uh, you'd get more consistent performance. I guess the final thing I'd like to say is I'd like to I like I, I want to praise Claude Shannon, a brilliant man, a humble man, who had an absolute profound effect on our world. Um, all of our technical devices today uh, we owe we owe the possibility of those devices to the digital framework the and the information technology that he created and. Uh, so i just like to remember him at this time. Thank you, Claude Shannon.